uh, serious fraud squad. And I was told... The serious fraud squad. <laughs> yeah, they said they're not, he said they were not doing nothing about it. Yeah, Simple. Just, we're yeah. not going to do anything. Yeah. At least you got an honest answer. A, yeah. a lot of us said, oh, we're investigating it. <laughs> well, when I Another five years. When I chased it up, mm. you know, uh, rang up again, they said they didn't know who this person was. So that was it. That was it was my... all over the papers as a criminal. They don't know who he was. Um, he had, no, the criminal, um, the, Mr. Mr. Booth, the valuer, um, he was just a person who'd done the value, but they were valuing properties. Um, let's say, for instance, 60 properties in Preston, uh, 80 properties in um, Brentford, and a load of properties where we had the uh, Olympics at the time, you know, building. And that was a fraud. So I, got in, I was involved with that. I ended up uh, paying um, mortgage works 150 um, I don't know, £115,000, and I thought that was that. But then for some reason, for three years, I couldn't get a mortgage. And it kept coming up, flagging up, that I owed nationwide. Money. So you pay them what you owe them, and it's still showing on your credit system that for you owe them. three years. Yeah. Put me in a bridging loan. Ah, so they scammed you in a bridging loan. I was scammed in a bridging loan. I, I, I will just interrupt your story a little bit. I had a problem with Santander once that couldn't get a deal. And they, after about four years, it turned mm -hmm. out they said I had one pound arrears. Wow. And they had a direct debit. That's serious. One pound. I have it all in black and white. So anyway, carry on. Yeah. So basically... Um, so wait, they do this, it seems, deliberately to, deliberate. to, to put you in a dodgy product. Right. Now... What happened from there? Um, the solicitor I had, um, his name is Julian Wilkins. Mm -hmm. um, he took my case on and I found, no, sorry. Yeah, he took my case on. Julian Wilkins, solicitor, yeah? yeah. Solicitor. Mm -hmm. He took my case on and for some reason, I have to admit, Mortgage Works was giving me a chance to get finance and they were asking him to get finance you know and get judgment set aside right. and he said he did but they've sent letters I've got proof of this letters that um, please um, could you sort out this, the, um, this judgment to get it set aside and he said he did but it was like a deliberate thing to get me into debt which I got into debt mm -hmm. and he got away I tried to even to take him to court you got um, into fake debt it looked like it's fake that but not only that there's a company called Kaplan Singh and Friedlander yes they're an Icelandic bank yeah and I said to him look this is like PPI the government's giving money back Julian can you sort this out because basically I'm losing I lost 850,000 so you should get compensation basically yes. and, and he, he didn't your solicitor about. didn't bother two, two cases mm. it's like you did you feel like he was playing for the other team he wasn't playing for me. Um, <laughs> you know, when I explained, look, basically we should be getting money back because it's like PPI. Anyway, Kaplan Singh and Freelander went bankrupt. Yes. So that was a write-off. You know, um, mm. They took a flat in St. John's Wood. Uh, they sold it for 250000 but worth a lot more. Mm. Um, Just a little bit more. St. John's yeah. Wood, my God, that's where Lord's Cricket Ground is, uh, people it's who don't know. opposite Lord's Cricket Ground wow. kind of thing. Anyway, from there, um, I'm stuck in a bridging loan now. Um, and I, I, I got in touch with Nationwide because Nationwide kept on coming up. But the funny thing, um, my solicitor resolved the problem for me. He got in touch with Nationwide and they removed the charge. After three years, I even demonstrated outside mm. one of their, their, um, their, their facilities, the banks. And, mm. um, what, nationwide? nationwide? You went outside nationwide and how did you I, demonstrate? Tell us about I it. I had to ruin a suit. I had mm -hmm. a placard and we, we videoed it. Mm -hmm. And um, they called the police. The police came along and they asked me why was I dressed this way. And I said, look, I'm not breaking the law. I think oh, this is my fashion. So mm -hmm. they said, look, keep the noise down, which I wasn't causing a, a yeah, disturbance. You weren't causing, yeah. No. But anyway, you have a down. right to protest, peaceful yes, protest. In yeah. fact, they called me into the bank and I oh, sat right. down and then the police came in. 
So, so that's a way to get an appointment with the bank manager, you protest. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't, it didn't move them. Mm. But um, a year later, a year and a half later, my solicitor um, remo um, got it removed. So roughly three years, well, three years, I'm still in the bridge and loan now, but I was fr roughly three years, mm. I'm in this debt um, of, of a bridge and loan. Now, so you got basically um, tricked into taking this debt by someone messing your credit correct. and the people messing your credit had a vested interest in the debt. Yes. Unbelievable. Well, a lot of people wouldn't believe and that's, you know, the law, British law or British justice. Mm. Well, there's no British justice for me. Um, I, I really got it, you know. Not, not only that, <laughs> the same judge who lost me the case, basically, mm -hmm. he said, look, uh, I had a solicitor, oh, sorry, a barrister in the county court and where it should have been in the high court. And this judge, so my barrister turned up without no paperwork. Wow. And I sat, I sat down. How much did you pay him? I paid him, um, I was paying a solicitor, I think it was about a thousand, sort of a thousand pounds. You know, it worked out to about three thousand pounds. For the day? Um, yes. Okay. You know? um, now, this barrister said, don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. So the judge and the other side's barrister having a discussion with themselves. So the judge on the other side um, uh, appeared to be working like a team. They were, yeah. Mm. And they were talking. Well, the judge, as far as we were made to believe, is supposed to be like the referee. Yes, yeah, supposed to be um, an hour mm -hmm. um, uh, court sitting, but it was 20 minutes in. <laughs> and he said, look, in my opinion, you need to pay um, Kapling Singer and Freelander. So it's Kapling Singer and Freelander. So in his, in who, the barrister's opinion? You know, in the judge's opinion. The judge's opinion. Yeah. Did the judge see the contract? No, he didn't. They didn't ah. bother. Did you know, see the accounting, see how the no, money came? No. So he, he made an opinion. He made the opinion. Based on yeah. um, what the discussion said with the other yes. side. Uh -huh. Anyway. This I'm, is how the law works in England, you know? Well, they make an opinion into I'm a judgment. Learning. I'm learning. Mm. The solicitor, um, I said to Julian Wilkins, listen, I would like to appeal. For six months, I've been telling him I want to appeal. And he said, oh, you run out of time. I've so he delayed. Here you go being scammed in another way again. Yeah. He delayed your appeal and then tell you you run out of time. Yeah. So basically, um, the properties I had, you know. I'd, so, uh, so let me just recap quickly. You got into this debt situation because the people who messed your credit had a vested interest to get you into debt. Looks like and it, yeah. now the, 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 the barrister who got a vested interest tell you you run out of time when he's the one who didn't act. It was a solicitor. His name is, is a solicitor, but I had a barrister. Who yeah, they always got kept, a barrister in the kept, background. Kept quiet. What, what, what's, your, what's your solicitor's name again? Julian Wilkins. Julian Wilkins. Yes, yeah. and I've got proof, funny thing. Everybody's got proof, we've don't got, worry. We've got paperwork. This is going on social media, so they yeah. have a right to, re to reply. I would love to show you where the other side said, showed all the mm -hmm. times they contacted Julian Wilkins. Yeah. And he, his father was sick. He was doing a meeting, couldn't make it. Yeah. Somebody died in his family, etc., etc. All the excuses on all the planet. All excuses not to do it. So I ended up with um, uh, a charge, you know, a CCJ um, against me, and um, that was that. But mm -hmm. anyway, to move forward now. Yeah. My ex-wife. <laughs> uh, you ex have one of those, yeah. Yeah. It's not um, her, is it? What What was mentioned? Mm. Um, that I had. 1.8 million in equity. Yeah. I was earning 270,000 pounds and my yeah. son was disabled, which was not true, none of them. But it just so happened, it turned out, it was the same judge who took this on, took the case on. And um, then... So no conflict of interest there? Well, I, I did complain. I said I didn't want this, this um, yeah. judge. So um, um, his name is Judge Debris. 
De Vries yeah. in where? Watford? No, he was in um, circuit. Uh, funny thing, he was, I believe, he was a family court a judge. A family court judge. Same as my ex, the solicitor, Julian Wilkins, so they must right. know each other. Yeah. So um, that, that's what happened there. But what happened was I received a, a letter at one o'clock in the afternoon to say that I should be in court at 10 o'clock. In the same day? Yes. But wow. then I received a letter the next day saying that they're going to get me for um, breach or I don't know what it, you know, this contempt of court, contempt or, of something. court or something like mm. that. To turn up, you know, I didn't turn up at court. Failing to appear. And then mm. I've got another one to say I didn't turn up again. So yeah. what they were doing, they weren't sending me letters. But furthermore, with this case, I ended up um, paying out six hundred thousand pounds on the property, plus one hundred fifteen thousand, which put me more into debt. Yeah. Now we bring it. So, up. so the, you are being strategically. <laughs> I've been raped. Asset stripped. I've been raped. Yeah. Beaten, slapped. <laughs> yeah. You name it. Spiritually. Yeah. Bring it up to. T um, I did ask for a. Um, computer records mm -hmm. but what I received was something completely different not mentioning about my son being disabled me earning 270,000 pounds and me having assets of 1.8 million yeah so it put me in debt so I've been roughly so it doesn't correspond to the information no Mm, and the claim. The claim doesn't correspond to the record. So basically, they didn't give me the record. Mm -hmm. What it was, they posted something from my letterbox to say mm. the claim it was. And it all, you know, all changed. I, I have made a request. Um, Re you made a second request. I have just recently. Yeah, you got a badass um, letter from Skambosta TV. Yes. And really you sent helpful. it off. In fact, this, this your, is... Your common law right to be open and transparent. Let's see. Yeah. As to the court order, common law duty to be open and transparent. Give me my record. I need to see the file. I need a copy of this, that, that, and the other. And I'm signed there in proper signature and sealed. And the court has stamped it on the 9th of October. So you're doing good. It's their turn now to perform. Right. So, um, I obviously made a request. I'm still waiting because, from my understanding, she give it to you within 48, 48 hours. 48 hours. But this has been now uh, three weeks. Yeah. Um, I haven't had no paperwork. And this is about perjury now. In the yeah, I, I know. This just, they're doing a lot of wrong, right. a lot of different way to describe it. But basically, it comes down to a scam. Yeah. Now, I'm with another this bank. Mm -hmm. who I've been with, you know, remember I've been in the bridging loan for three years, yeah. so I've paid a lot of money out. And what's happened here? I tried to sell a property, but the receivers got hold of a company, um, can I call the name? Yeah. Foxton's. Foxton's, the famous fa Foxton's, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're doing, not aggressive or nothing. No, they were doing a good yeah. Good job. They were selling. They, um, what they said, they had buyers mm -hmm. the property, but the receivers, for some reason, got got in touch with Foxtons to say, well, they're taking over, and they should take my property off the market. Um, I'm thinking. Well, when you're oh, calling these people receivers, but you don't know how they were appointed. I don't know who they are, but they were yeah. the receivers. You know, Foxen said they checked them out and they knew who they yeah, were. Yeah, they said they checked them out, yeah. but they must show you the checking out. Yes. Everybody's saying and saying, yeah. show me. Well, This is what the public need to do. Yeah. Show me. I don't want the, your words and anybody I want to see with my own eyes. It's such a big... A common issue that comes up. Yeah. Somebody said, therefore, it is. Right. So basically, um, I'm baffled and I ended up in court. Funny thing, uh, today, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, today is uh, the, the 11th. So today, yeah. I went to court and um, realized it's been a bit, bit of a scam. 
So wait, wait, wait. Somebody written to you um, with what appeared to be court documents, yes. but it didn't come from the court, yeah. and it didn't have any court stamp. But it said like something they're going to repossess your property today. Correct. And it had different addresses all over it. Yes. And uh, it said there was a warrant, but there was no warrant attached. Yes. And uh, lo and behold, a lone locksmith came this morning. Yes. And was trying to change your lock. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling you a story for you because mm -hmm. I know a little. And then you had already applied to the court to have a hearing about this matter but of what it's appearing now it was never a court matter but that's a secondary thing mm -hmm. you had a letter back from the court and what did it say um the letter said um well um there's no case you know um basically they, um there's, there's not going ahead so i'm baffled again no, no, the, the letter says they couldn't process your application oh, well, we, we because they haven't received... They haven't received um, any fees. The court fee. Yes. We can leave it at that. The court yeah. was said, since they didn't get their money, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. they can't proceed and they chucked back the whole paperwork. They didn't just tell you to bring the money, did they? No. They chucked the paperwork back yeah. to you. But the funny thing... Um, the lock, the, 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 no, stay the, with me on this point, Johnny. I want to kill it to death because mm -hmm. we're trying to get the public to know. Yeah. The court said they can't do nothing without the fee. Correct. I want that to sink in a thousand times. Yes. And they sent you back all the paperwork. They didn't just ask you to send the money tomorrow or bring the money tomorrow. They sent the whole stuff back. Yeah. So without a court fee, that shouldn't be... No, shouldn't no be ball can play. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so we that that now we've established yeah. beyond any doubt. Correct. Okay. Right. So my story goes on. Yeah. Um, they were trying to rep repossess the property because they trying to make out Whoa. this is um, there was a locksmith there. Yes. Yeah. Because they're trying to make out that the property was empty. Yes. And that, it was abandoned, which, which was, is a common scam yeah. saying it's an abandoned property. Yeah. Yeah. Which wasn't true. Yeah. Because um, it had been rented out. Um, to a housing association. So that, there we go from there. But going back now, I tried to take nationwide to court and mortgage works to court. Um, and the directors I tried to take to court. And I put in the evidence. And in the, in the office, well, when I was in court, they said, well, where's, where's your claim? And I said, well, I gave it in the office. Yeah. And um, when I went to, they threw the case out. Yeah. So I went back to the, the office and I asked the, the young man, I, I gave you the paperwork. Yeah. Why didn't you put it in? Yeah. You know, it's because of you, I lost the case. They threw the case out. But then furthermore, uh, Julian Wilkins... Mm -hmm. Who is who is behind two cases, one of the eight hundred and fifty thousand pounds, yeah, and one of mortgage works, and nationwide. He I tried to take him to court in in the high court, and they threw that out. But I've got evidence of all the things he's done. Yeah. So you 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 seem to have it stuck in your head like I do, and like the whole nation does that if you have the evidence of a crime, somehow you will be able to get something done? Well, basically, I thought, I, I believed growing up, there's justice in England, you know, the, the law, uh, yeah. you know, the old Bailey, and you've got these old judges, or yeah. know, this judge, yeah, it's justice. But it seems it's no better than the sus law. Yeah. Um, which everyone, well, at a certain age, we know what, why the sus law. The sus law is that they could see us, uh, they could stop and search you for no particular reason or... No, the sus law uh -huh. was that you could be accused of something, i.e. if we're talking and we're standing outside yeah. um, a shop, then we would be arrested for suspicion of trying to break in, or the sus law would be, uh, I had a friend of mine 
he was walking along with his bicycle near number 10, he was outside number 11 down the street, and he was arrested for suspicion of trying to break in. So, so my picture I got on the petition standing outside yeah. number 10, they're going to come and arrest me oh, for well, trying to break surprised. in. But well, I was actually in there, so they arrest me for stealing something. <laughs> well, the scam, the scam is uh -huh. uh, you wouldn't get bail. Mm -hmm. You'd be in prison for six to nine months. My then, God. Then you stand in front of the judge, and the judge would say, look, you're innocent. Go home. That was a sus law. My God. And that's what, why we had the Brixton riots, because ah. of the sus law. I and see. And it took a riot mm -hmm. to change that law but okay they change it to um, the terrorism law where you can be kept for 60 hours so is it fair for people i'm going to say this people like me because i know a lot of other people who mm -hmm. are going through the same thing so do, um, do you feel you feel growing up in london as a black man black boy. kid black whatever you had the full experience of school life teenage life it seems and uh, you feel like you have the extra life is tough for most people but I'm, I'm you feel there's extra barriers for you extra uh, let me put it this way extra victimization i'm not going to try to use a big uh, victimization i'm not going to say I've got harassment on my shoulder or harassment i'm just going to say how it is uh -huh. um you do have a lot of ethnic minorities the ones who are growing up Mm -hmm. Like Welsh and well, Scottish and I, Bangladeshi. I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah? As <laughs> yeah. my name, mm -hmm. I'd ring up and I'd say, look, okay, hi, my name is Johnny Mitchell. Mm -hmm. I, I do sound British. Professional, yeah, you've got and, a radio um, voice. And, yeah. and basically, when I turn up, mm. uh, how can we help you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, the job's gone. Now, yeah. you, you've got a, obviously a lot of uh, young men growing up in England. Mm. who obviously you either go to college but you leave college and you can't get a job yeah. or you probably get into wrongdoings yeah? yeah and obviously when you're doing wrongdoings um, your assets are taken from you mm. you go into prison you come out you some people again. doing wrongdoings and, yeah, but, some people, but we're seeing a lot of people doing wrongdoings and they're, they're living very well yeah, and nobody touches I, I them I must say, say this though mm. Um, and they're doing wrongdoings and they keep going in and out but obviously yeah. uh, police will arrest them mm. take the goods so that's no good then you've got the other system where somebody work hard mm. and they lose all their assets so it yeah. goes back into the system like yeah. myself yeah um, then it goes on from there to another scam of tax where they say you owe X, Y, Z. Mm. And me being ignorant to the facts, saying, well, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Which one time I, <laughs> I owed 960,000 pounds. Yeah. No, 930,000 pounds. You must have money. taken a good salary for that. Well, that meant <laughs> I, I was earning 5 million pounds. <laughs> so they said, you know what? Close your company down. So mm. I did. So I was out of the West End of London. So someone made up an imaginary tax bill and, and told you to close told your company. Me. So if they thought you actually owed the money and had the money to pay, they wouldn't tell you to close well, the company down. Well, she did say, oh, you got six houses. All I've done, I remortgaged. I remortgaged. Yeah, I remortgaged. You, 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 you know? You're well, geared up, they call it, gearing up. Yeah, I didn't obviously buy a house like that. I remortgaged. You raised yeah, capital and expanded yeah, and that's, over time that's what I was doing. build a portfolio. Yeah, and you took houses. on the risk and borrowing, yes, yeah. I did. And um, then it was said I owed um, £230,000 personally. Now, I know I didn't remortgage. All I was doing, I was driving an old banger. And you were bootstrapping. You kept your costs down low like, like down Elon Musk. And uh, you built up your empire. I and you were, you were ready to kind of enjoy yeah, life a little I'll bit. I try my best. Yeah. And this is... I want to say this, this is where a lot of young ethnic minorities mm -hmm. who feel that they're not part of the English system, they, they become, you know, what's the word I'm trying to pick? Alienated? Right alienated? Dis 
They don't feel that they're British. Mm -hmm. Well, first thing, I thought I was English, but then Margaret Thatcher said, you're not English, you're British. Right. <laughs> they changed the rules just like that. But then those kids who are growing up, who are Christian background, they're going to prison, they come out. You're more English than Prince yeah. Philip. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> they say that. But that's, that's how it goes. And mm. the system's here. And I feel it's to keep people like me down. Yeah? Yeah. Because there's people like me who were successful and not yeah. getting tripped up. Mm -hmm. We can then get our, our children and our grandchildren to, be, to go to the university, try to be doctors yeah. and so forth. Which the opportunities, we're tripped up from the word go. It's like snakes and ladders. You build up and they knock you back down to zero. Knock you down to zero. But you know, Johnny, you and I have a slightly different thing because I see also happening to white kids and all sorts. I, it I seems do. to be, it seems to be whoever mm. they can get their hands on, once you've accumulated a little bit of assets or wealth, um, they, instead of doing it themselves, they find it a lot easier mm -hmm. to um, come and take it from someone else. And I, and I guess probably if you're an ethnic minority, so. More so. you're probably more, more vulnerable. So. You know, I would say, if, if, you know, say this, if you haven't got a good, a good accountant, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, my, my accountant is based in High Barnet. His name is Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Let's call him that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, basically, he's done a really good job mm. you know, in advising me and making me more wise. And I believe that whenever you start a business, you should always have a good accountant mm. and keep your paperwork up to date. Because if you don't, after seven years, when you think you're doing, you're doing okay, and then the taxman says, look, you owe X, Y, Z, and you've got no paperwork, then, uh, going back five years. Yeah, you can't years. prove him wrong, you, you and you're, you're wrong. guilty until proven so innocent. These are all the hurdles which was thrown against me, and I do feel a bit bitter mm. because I had a choice: either mm. work hard or just be a gangster. And yeah. basically, it's showing, obviously, other young kids who are growing up in London. They feel when they see people like me who've worked hard, trying to be successful, and they've fallen by the wayside. It's because of the system, and it's a dodgy system which is going on. Very unfair mm. system, which is played out, and, and you can't, you, uh, you're, you're being gagged. You've got to go through the court system, and you're gagged, and you can't say nothing. You, you don't have to just go through the court system. The court, they use the court system as a tool to well, rob you. That is it. It's, I'm going to say this, it's a sus law, it's that word, a sus mm. law. You've been accused of something which you can't prove yourself innocent, mm. or you're innocent. Well, you can you. prove, but they, uh, they, you, nobody's looking at evidence. Like you, you said to me many times, yeah. I have evidence, and what, yes. it you're, seems to matter for Jack. You're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. So basically, if you're going to be burnt at the stake, they duck you in the River Thames first, and if you survive, then you're a witch. Mm. So, and if, <laughs> if you die, yeah. you're innocent. Yeah. So basically, the situation here is that uh, I, I end up in court, going through the court system. I'm accused of whatever. And if you don't have a good solicitor, it's not going to happen. So have you ever had a good solicitor that helped you out? Um, I've gone to solicitors. But have they helped um, you out successfully? No. Right. Um, they so seem, they so what, when you say... Certain uh -huh. solicitors seem to be part of the the pack, the members. Oh, but have you had one who didn't shaft you? Um, I have had one. Mm -hmm. uh, and helped he, you out? He helped me out in finding, um, um, removing the charge which nationwide... So you might out. as well give him a compliment, mention uh, his name. Well, I don't want to mention his name because the reason why, he, he obviously I need to get permission to use his, his name. And Not to use his name, you have but, a right to but speak. This, this gentleman's based on, on, in Brixton, Brixton mm -hmm. High Street here. And, okay. Um, uh, that's it. But when I asked him to go against my ex wifes solicitor, mm -hmm. he, he did say, Look, I don't go against my own. He said, I go, Don't go against my own. That's what he said. Wow. When I g gave the paperwork to another solicitor, mm. um, she, I gave it a pile, the evidence. Yeah. She said she couldn't find anything, but my fee was over 2,600. Right. That's for what? <laughs> 0.1%. Mm. 
probably uh, an hour's work for her. Right. When I went to another solicitor and I gave him the paperwork of um, being accused of earning 270000 plus my son being disabled, plus me having $1.8 million in assets, which was wrong, nowhere near that. The so it's all, it's all rubbish, yeah? He, he lost the paperwork. Yeah, he, he lost the rubbish paperwork. Yes. Convenient, huh? Convenient. So, um... Read it or say it. Yeah, so, so John, um, Johnny, you had uh, a locksmith at your house with, with no bailiff. They said bailiff was coming, but there was no bailiff there. Yeah. They were at the wrong property to begin with. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> You requested the court file. Remind me when. Um, what month? Oh, regarding this, this one, um, the court file in... Um, June. 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 June 2017 and now we're in the middle of October 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to get it 48 hours and you just got it a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago. On, okay. On the 9th. The 9th of October. No, sorry, I lie. On the 10th. Whatever, 9th, 10th of October. Yeah, That's yeah. absolutely disgusting. Mm -hmm. A man wants to defend himself. He can't get the court record in six months while thugs are turning up at his door with drills. This right. is the country we're living in. So yeah. now he tried to set aside some, apply to the court. And this is um, what the court said to him. And uh, this is so educational, it's unbelievable. It says here, this is from... Court and Tribunal Service. Um, it says um, your letter dated 29th, which referred to the district judge. Oh, it was referred to the district judge to request his court file. It's nothing to do with the judge. It's an administrative matter. That's what I understand. And they didn't name the district judge. It's a nameless judge. Um, so, he said he can have a copy of the claim form, particulars of claim, and any order made. So, he's not offering the computer records, or the allocation questionnaire, or the evidence to support the application. So, this is from Barnet Court, the famous Barnet Court. And what's the next one, Johnny, in there? Next one. So, when he got it, you did get the computer record. I did. Which you did, yeah. judge, according to the judge, you can't have, but you got it. Correct. So let's have a peek. This is a claim form. Claim for possession of property. And it's got some really dodgy writing there. And a case number here. Where it looks here. Like it's, been, it's been altered or something. It's been doctored. And the fee account is blank. And normally there's another box for the fee. So there is no fee on this case. What's that? Don't, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> this, this court uh, seal, it says the county court, it doesn't say which county court, doesn't have a date in the middle, so we don't know when it was stamped or when it was sealed. Anyway, um, it says here, the claim, the claimant is claiming possession of blank. Oh, no, there's an address there. And it will be heard on blank. At blank, A-M. Um, it's unbelievable. So, this also says here, oh, oh, hold on, Johnny. It says here, there's a fee, a court fee of 355 pounds. And uh, it has a little issue date there of a very faint, what looks like the 13th of April, 2017. Very, very faint. Issue date. So that means it's, it's implying the case was issued. This is page two of the claim form. Grounds for possession. The claim for possession. Possession of what? Land. What? Um, occupation. Vacant position. Claim number. Blank. 
Um, so it says mortgage arrears, fine. And then it says here, um, is the claimant claiming demotion of tenancy? No. That means they're not seeking possession to evict anyone. Um, will the claim include Human Rights Act? Any issues under there? No. The I first, see, the first yes. protocol of human rights is uh, protection of property. And uh, that's a false uh, statement. That is perjury. And then it is signed by a, a said trainee solicitor, Sarah Hussein. Um, so that's that one. So Mr. Johnny Mitchell got his particulars of claim for possession. And again, we got a very dodgy case number there. It's been written and scribbled over another number. God knows what that's all about. There is no court seal on the document at all. So this is not a court document. Um, anyway, uh, where is the... It says there is a mortgage or something. Possession of property. Um, <clears throat> The defendant agreed to repayment of the loan interest, blah, blah, blah. Mortgage arrears, £23,875. £23, this is a... Oh, um, so they go and there's an amount of loan, blah, blah, blah. So it says here interest rate for arrears and on this one it says um, they don't believe he's in a uh, the claimant is not aware that he's getting benefits because if you get benefits you got special protection under the housing act um, tenancy blam 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 they're fully aware the property is rented out. As you can see in the beginning of the claim form, it says the claimant's knowledge, where is it? It says here, the agreement for the loan secured by the mortgage is not a regulated consumer credit agreement. So they know it's a buy to let. And here, they go tenancy, blank, 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 blank. And they have a locksmith drilling the property with people inside, wondering what on earth is going on. So, I don't know where to start on. This is a computer record. So th this was a funny one, eh, Johnny? Definitely funny, you know, from what you, how you <laughs> explain it to me. According to the computer record, how much now they said you're claiming? Um, they're saying that it was, f well, basically in court, they said I owed 500 and... But they, they say here 30. you have arrears of 23,818 yes. pounds. Yeah. But on the computer record, they... Um, the case is amount claimed a big fat zero. Well, that's still confusing. So, are you prepared yeah. to write them a check for zero and settle the matter, Johnny? I would love to do that. Okay. Write them a check. On the same paper, it says here the court fee is three hundred and fifty-five pounds. So, how do you get a court fee of three fifty-five pounds on a claim amount of zero? The, you were talking about accountants earlier. They got a yes. genius accountant working in Barnet County Court. Should be, yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let us see page two.
So this is a computer court record. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's go to the beginning. Now the beginning comes at the end on this one. Weirdly, that's how they all work. The beginning, it says on the 25th of April, there was a hearing. So how can you get a hearing where there was no application? They're really, really clever up there, isn't it, Johnny? Very clever. Eh? Too, too smart. <laughs> You get, you, get a, you get a hearing with no application. Well, that's... that's and then if we go here and is, look... Is that illegal? By law? Well, I'm uh, after the question. <laughs> I do know. There's a question that I do know, but is it illegal? In the, in the eyes of the law. <laughs> now, um, it said there it was issued. The issue date. Is that fraud? <laughs> it's is it? all sorts of things. To, to make these things in the name of the Queen, it's uh, treason, I would say. Anyway, it says a case record was created. What does that mean? So nowhere does it say the case was issued by the court. There's no issue. There was no evidence of a fee being paid. So when you paid a fee, it shows. Mm -hmm. And they even fussy, wrong fee, blah, blah, blah. But the, the claimant... There's no evidence of the claimants paying the fee. So let's turn to section one, section three, page one. Um, so this says, no caseman payments have been made for this case. So Johnny, the Ministry of Justice told us clearly. Yeah that uh, if you don't pay the court fee, they can't take another step. Correct. And, you know, I'm proud of you because you've put that in a um, very good reality for us. Mm -hmm. Because you have a, when you try to make your application to chuck out all this rubbish, yes. the court replied to you, didn't they? They did. And their reply was, I am returning your application as you are not eligible to help with fleas. Please resubmit your application either with a new EX1 plus evidence of what benefit, if you get benefit, of £50. So, current able um, civil section, what, which court is this? Um, the county court at Watford. Okay, now... What, what's baffling is, is, is different numbers, you know. Uh, like, yeah, well, that's another issue, but they're telling you, they're telling you here, Johnny, mm -hmm. that if you didn't pay a fee, I you can't... can't they, and they didn't just tell you to bring the money tomorrow, they threw the whole thing back at you. Correct. So the case cannot be passed to a judge mm -hmm. unless the fee has been paid and the case, the claim is properly constituted. Right. So the question we're asking is, how come the claimant didn't pay a fee, but their case is uh, in front of a judge? Yeah. So you've got an issue here of avoid proceedings. Correct. Based on fraud upon the court. Mm -hmm. Somebody between the court and your claimant and their solicitor is make believing cases to steal your property that's right um, they said you had 23 array, thousand arrears and on on the uh, uh, on the computer record it says the claim is for zero mm -hmm. and then when you did pay your fee you got you got a receipt that's a proper receipt on a receipt book with a number you paid barnet court how much you paid, 13 pounds, that was for your document. So, yes. I mean, we've had a few solicitors mm -hmm. telling people, including Haringey Council, of all people, telling people the court doesn't issue a receipt for fees. Well, proof is in the pudding, it's all there. Well, Ministry of Justice is a business, that, like, well, like should, McDonald's or any other business. You should always get a receipt. Um, when you pay for something, no anything you pay for, because just in case they turn around and say no, um, you didn't pay, so you need a fee. Yeah. You need to, to get the receipt. Right. So um, this is a beautiful case, Johnny, and a wonderful example that lots of people are going through. 
of court fraud. How do you feel today you've discovered that it's been a fraudulent claim after all the harassment you've been going through on sleepless nights? And I've been stressed, it's affected my work. Um, it's, it's kind of aged me, slowed me down. Um, feeling that, uh, hopeless feeling that I'm in a, a, a country of justice and there's <laughs> no justice for me. Yeah. There's none. And um, feeling that, you know, growing up, things being thrown at me as a, as a kid, as, as a young man growing up, all of, you know, the stop and search, funny thing, you know, I'm 60, in, in my 60s. Well, you look good on it, but yeah. And this is from the age of 12 years old, going through the, all the stresses, being stop search, being accused of all these different things. And later, later times in my life, you know, even getting stopped driving my car and accused of speeding when I did not. Um, even to the point of parking mm -hmm. and getting my car towed away, which um, was mentioned that my car, I'm, I refused to pay my fine. Mm -hmm. So the guy towed my car away, which I'm a big guy. Yeah, mm. so I wouldn't let, allow it to happen. But he said, "Well, okay, you towed my car away," and then when it was proven, I was in Harrods when my car was towed away. I didn't have the opportunity, and the guy said, "Oh, some black guy came along, and said that was his car, and he's not paying the fee," and so that put me in trouble. Um, insurance going up, yeah. For a smart car, my insurance and in, I had no claims, went up to two thousand and 400 pounds. Mm. So I parked my car up. It's, this is just justice, how justice is in England. It's a way of people like me feeling bitter, angry, and they feel that they're not part of the system. No matter yeah. who we are, it's, uh, <laughs> is it? Like, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's terrible, it's terrible. I mean, you know, if I go back to the documents, you know, we got here some documents as order for possession of your property, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be served on you, uh, I believe. Mm -hmm. But it's got the um, solicitor's address in the address box. <laughs> yeah? So how on earth are you going to receive that? And then down here it says the defendant, which I presume they're referring to you, it's got the solicitor's address again. Yep. So you could never ever be possibly served with such right. a document. Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact it's a criminal document. It is. The service, it's unbelievable. They, they're putting you in a position, you've got no chance. And there'll be bailiff turning up, and illegal bailiffs, with drills and with police. And then you try to defend your property as you have a right to do. Mm -hmm. And then they will arrest you. Correct. I mean, what, what, what kind of system is this? So. You know, Johnny, what would you like for your own self and for the public and the future generation? What do you want to see happen? And hopefully your fighting your case will contribute to that. What would you like to see? Well, I'm going to use the words of Theresa, Theresa May. Right. <laughs> she said uh, she's, going to, she's going to make it justice for people like myself, the court system, jobs, etc to make it fair and just this way a lot of people <laughs> my, my, my parents used to think England is a just country and that's what we all believe in the court of law court of justice the fair law um, the old Bailey the, even part of the house of the parliament when they pass laws it's justice and it's supposed to go back in fact uh, the Queen is our protector and it's uh, part of the Queen's law should we say even though we've had laws going through but she's our protector Queen and country Queen and country and we need to obviously look into law in fact it's been an education for me thank you Anthony you've opened my eyes you've made me more aware and I believe other people should learn law um, understand law and learn 
so we don't get tripped up and get Well, wrong. you know, one of, the, one of the mistakes the society has made is they've left the law to the law enforcement. <laughs> yes. And the law yeah. is for the public. It's the public who are responsible, and we are you, trying to readjust the balance with social media and all that. You follow the law, you, but you don't know the law. No, but, you know, in principle, mm -hmm. we establish, the members of the public determine mm -hmm. what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, and it is us. And now we lost the track for a while, and we have the journey through social media and other means, people like yourself and technology. It's technology that's showing you these computer records mm -hmm. because they can always fiddle the papers, yeah. but they can't fiddle the computers. Correct. And they're not used to dealing. This is a new uh, fraud detection, mm -hmm. you know, digital fraud detection. Well, um, I'm wondering if uh, those people who have been doing fraud, would they go to prison? I think it's changing. We've seen a few bankers go to prison. We've seen in Spain, they jailed uh, 68 bankers in one fell swoop. In Iceland, they jailed a whole bunch. They made them bankrupt. They did everything. And the, the country is flourishing now, yeah. and peaceful and joyful. And, uh, you know, it, it, it is not so much about revenge. It is just about getting yeah, things justice. right. This is about yeah, justice. because the, the problem uh, we were touching on earlier, when you went in the court, and they were handing you these papers, which they withheld for six months. Mm -hmm. Just remind us, how did they appear to you? Very agitated, nervous. <laughs> when, uh, I was trying to work out yeah. why uh, the, the manageress of the court, ma court manager, and uh, the lady on the reception, and they were looking at each other, kind of very suspicious, like, as they give me the paperwork. <laughs> looking very suspicious, looking at each other and giving me the paperwork. And I'm thinking, well, do I smell? <laughs> Did I have a bath? I know we all sweat, but you know what? Why, why are you looking that way? And why and do you so, think they were so uptight and edgy? I was ignorant to the fact uh -huh. until you pointed it out to me, even though you, you explained about the court records. Um, ignorant to the fact, and you, you've seen some mistakes or well, big mistakes which they're hiding well we've seen evidence that this is not a court case at all no it's, it's never been court. issued by the court and now you are in a position to defend yourself because you have the evidence, evidence which yeah. they have de delayed you denied you since june mm -hmm. and caused you to have a lot of stress Correct. and um you you had people builders in your property improving it and stuff and tenants and there were people there threatening to drill out the lock based on these, um, if I may say, bullshit stuff. Correct. So, um, all right, Johnny. Well, you've been a superstar, and this yeah. is going to go on the internet, and it won't be the end of your case, and it will be fascinating to follow up. You're a great fighter, you're a great spirit, and I hope your case could be an inspiration to many, many to come. I hope so too, and I hope, well, um, if I'm a beacon, you follow, but boy, it's a hard slog, don't give up. Well, your lifetime work and staying on the right side and doing the right thing, let's hope it will stand you in good stead and, and, and be there for you know, um, the future. Thank you very much, Johnny. Okay. Scambosta TV.